All right. Well, um, I want to thank uh, Robert and the uh, one, two, three committee research committee for um, their regular outstanding job of putting together forums that I think are always quite interesting and bring together some topics and we can have conversations that are different than a regular session. Uh, so thanks very much for that. I'm like uh, Thomas, I'm very happy to be back in kind of somewhat a normal world of talking to people. Although at Illinois, we're, we're talking to people in uh, classes, we're back there, but it's nice to be at ACI for sure. Okay, uh, you see uh, the title here is Don't Let Letters Get in the Way of Understanding. And uh, before I uh, start, I want to assure you that Thomas and I did not coordinate at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so you'll see a lot of similarities, that's okay. You'll see a few differences and a unique take maybe, and maybe a little more irreverent and less technical on my part. Uh, but the, you know, the messages um, uh, hopefully will be there. Okay, so SHM and NDT, E, whatever, are seen to kind of live in different worlds and be distinct and different buckets, different silos, and you're in one or the other. But uh, I understand that certainly is helpful for organization and uh, just, uh, you know, orderliness and helping plan things out. So even within ACI, we have two committees. We have committee 228 on non-destructive testing. And we have uh, committee 444 on structural health monitoring, the, which recently came out with its new document, which I encourage you to look at. I think it's a great document. And um, you'll see that there isn't a lot of crossover between them. They're different, right? A method is either here or here, according to ACI. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. So if we look at uh, the technical literature, we can look at journals that have specialties and they're on the right, you see a journal that is dedicated to non-destructive evaluation. And on the left, you see a journal dedicated to structural health monitoring. So we see the separation there. But in this world here, um, the distinction is a little bit uh, less clear. So I'm familiar with the Journal of Non-Destructive Evaluation, and I can tell you, certainly there are submissions and publications there uh, that are, I think by Thomas's definition, would not fit the definition of NDT. It should be in the other journal, what happened, right? So there is no, what I'm saying is, although we at ACI, we have a clear distinction, um, that clear distinction is a bit arbitrary. There is no one definition. And I think that um, reveals itself in the journals, but still there, I understand the need to organize and separate and distinguish. Uh, but the, then the question is, well, what is NDE and what is SHM? And we heard Thomas's definition earlier and I, I liked it. Um, and mine is somewhat similar, you'll see uh, at the bottom here, this is my definition, because I think you'll see there is no one yet unique, perfectly defined definition. And my definition is for NDT, uh, if you apply technology, and technology I use in a loose loosely, because we can hit the bridge with a hammer and use our ears, and that is technology that is, you know, standardized and works and is applied. And so NDE is technology that is applied for a short time. And I think you see, you saw that with Thomas. So for example, you have a tool, you take it from your shop or your lab, you go to the bridge, you apply it for a certain amount of time. At the end of the day, you take the tool off, you put it in your truck and you go back to the lab. That's NDT. If on the other hand, a technology or tool, which maybe looks very similar in many ways to the NDT, 
is living on part of the bridge permanently there is is like integrated into the structure for a reasonably amount long amount of time, perhaps the life of the bridge, then I will call it SHM. Those are my definitions. So it's either a tool you take on and you take it off at the end of the day or for some time period, that's NDT. And uh, if it lives integrated into the structure, then it's SHM. For me, that's like a clean distinction, but that's where I think we see that we can have blurring in definitions between these two uh, ideas uh, in academia. So, but, but my question is, we have now this definition that I have, but don't silo yourself to one or the other. I don't think it's good. There are, uh, it's better to rather think broadly, say, no, I, I have a problem. I'm not gonna relegate myself to SHM because that's who I am and that's the journal that I wanna publish in or whatever. Uh, there can be perfectly adequate NDT solutions. Or on the other hand, you have a problem where you think, oh, I'm an NDT person and uh, therefore um, I don't even have to look over there at the SHM world when there's a perfectly suitable solution there. So my point here is don't silo yourself and think broadly, uh, keep your mind open, don't live by these definitions. And rather I'd say, instead of thinking them as completely separate worlds that are in either one ACI document or another ACI document, think of them as much closer than that. They're part of the same family. Uh, maybe they're somewhat related and they may be a little bit different and can be distinguished from each other but really they're part of the same family. And we shouldn't look outside of the family when looking for a solution. Because after all, as I think Thomas eloquently said, the fundamental bases, a lot of the analyses that support one or the other method are the same. They're the same. And by the way, I really don't care if you call it NDT, NDI, NDE, NDT, NE, or something else. I understand what you mean. Now, some people are very particular about that. I don't care. Okay, so if you believe, if you are looking for what you believe are NDT solutions, <laughs> as I said before, I think it's wise to kind of think broadly like, well, is there what some people would call an SHM solution for this? So there are Mac users so the Mac is great at everything. And then of course there are the old IBM. And like, I love these pictures because these two photos say everything you need to know about Apple and IBM <laughs> right there. I love it. But we all know that some things Apple is really great at. And there are some things that, you know, IBM or, you know, we should say Windows operating format is just better at. Right? And so sometimes you have to be facile and use one or the other. Because if you don't consider these new possibilities you know, outside of what I expect, then you may be relegated to using not the latest ideas, not the latest technology and be stuck with less than optimal solution. I just love this picture. I'm like, these guys are like, look at this amazing data. <laughs> wow. <coughs> This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, 1110, oh, I knew it. I knew it, that was the answer. So, right, so, because uh, the point I wanna make is that what we're trying to do here in both of our committees and in the community is a very difficult problem. We have a giant challenge ahead of ourselves in this country and in the world, and that is to assess the infrastructure which is decaying and um, to do so in accurately, in a cost-effective way. And um, so accurate, fast, and what's oh, the other one? Cheap, right? Those three things. But look at what we have to assess. These are very difficult problems. And I will say, you know, with apologies to the medical community, this is a more difficult problem than assessing the human body. 
no way. We have such incredible variation within the structure, which is okay, that's normal. We have different kinds of aggregates and we have some cracks and those cracks are okay. And then we have a duct and we have grout in there and steel. It's a completely complicated problem. And if the steel is arranged in a different way, that's okay. And if it's a little bit down or different aggregates, that's okay. But then I wanna find the one little void in here. What a challenge. Very difficult, very complicated material characteristics, uh, highly variable material characteristics. And we have to sift through all of that and figure out and find the little problem, right? It's a challenge, but an important challenge. And then we're not dealing with small aircraft components that we can put in an aquarium and scan or put in an x-ray. We have to, in some cases, assess very difficult, very large structures. Now I'm of course exaggerating here, but you get the idea. Access, size, uh, material variability, elements. This is a great challenge, right? The challenge is to develop cost-effective, accurate and fast testing methodologies because we have a really important job and that is to assess our infrastructure, which is not getting any younger, like all of us, especially me, right? So it's a great challenge. So do you use NDT or do you use SHM? And my answer always is yes, whatever you need to do to solve this incredibly challenging problem. So I have an example on the right here of, can you use both together? Now, this is an academic study that we carried out at my university, but the idea is, can we integrate? Can we merge NDT and SHM in one job? So um, what you see here is a concrete column. So it's a mock-up of a building column, reinforced column. And the idea is, can we get the, a full image inside and out? And the outside, which we would, Basically, you know, I would call it kind of a vision-based reconstruction, which is more an SHM world. So for example, that kind of technology would be in the 444 document. Gives us, by reconstructing, we get a photo reconstruction of the outside, which is very useful because geometrically correct, we can see features. Oh yeah, there's that mark, here's the crack, and so on. But then we can also do tomography and other kinds of new technologies to see the inside, and in tomographs, you can open it up and slice and see what's inside. And then can we put these together, NDT and SHM, to get a better idea by fusing the data in a way, literally outside and inside together, to have a more holistic idea? So again, this is an academic study, what we did at the university, but I think it illustrates that to get together, we can use both you know, one technique or the other, or we could use both of them together. Now, as a counterexample, in a way, I will show you an example of where NDT and SHM can be used maybe to do pretty much the same job. And then the decision is, well, which one is more feasible for given conditions and equipment and expertise that you have, but we have two methods that do the same job. And so um, this is an example of trying to find um, ASR damage, alkali silica reactivity damage early on very early on before it's evident visually at all, but we want to know that, hey, we have a problem here in concrete. So again, this is an academic uh, study that uh, we did at my, my research lab where we used ultrasound. So we applied a scanning system. So literally you have the scanning system, you put it on the big, big concrete block that had a, it was a controlled ASR block, you let this thing scan with ultrasonic waves. So you collect a lot of data in X and Y of just how waves are traveling through there. And then you can, based on all this data, uh, rebuild it, build construction. And here I just show that what the ASR damage looks like. So without being moist, you could not see these cracks here, but there's these tiny cracks throughout that go around the aggregate in some cases through the aggregate. And what we're able to do with this scan is that come up with a view. So this is an XY plot of the top of this sample. And the colors 
indicate the amount of this level, this volume of cracking. So I'm not gonna go into the details, but basically it's a crack index. We're looking at how the waves interact and if there's more scatter and we hear more noise and scatter coming back, we say, oh, there's more cracks there along a the line. That's basically what we do. And so we have these you know, color images which cover an area and show us where cracks are developing. And these four different areas are the tops of these four big concrete blocks. And some of them have no ASR damage in them. It's a control sample. And some of them have high levels of ASR damage in them. So we can differentiate between them and, and the red color means higher crack volume. And so what I want you to get from this is that we are able to apply an NDT method. After all, at the end of the day, we took the scanner off the blocks and went home, and, but able to get these kind of color coded maps which show ASR cracking uh, where red is a higher index of cracking. Right, but this is an NDT method by my definition, right? But you can use an SHM method to essentially do the same thing. So this is work. So this work was uh, for my group, uh, my graduate student Home In, and I. And this work is by others. I'll credit them. And this is using acoustic emission, which by my definition, and I think Tom's definition too, is the SHM. You put the sensors on there and they live there for a while. Now in reality, they don't live all that long. We take them off and so on. But in a structure, we could leave them on there for the life of the structure or for an extended period of time. So it's an SHM method. You have sensors all around and basically you're just listening for cracks. It's a passive method. We don't control the stimulus, the ASR cracking and damage is the stimulus. And so this is just showing that it's a reinforced uh, concrete beam with ASR damage. They use something called PCA, principal component analysis, to kind of separate the different kinds of events and sounds that they have, and using some sophisticated approach, which I don't really understand totally, they get the same maps that I got, right? So they got a color code, oops, went to my punchline too early. They have a color code where red means higher indication of cracking and blue doesn't. I mean, it looks very, these are different samples, Right, in a different time, different approach. This is progressing the same sample. Again, this is an area you're showing how the cracks are developing over some area of inspection. But you see how the ASR damage is progressing over a year or so, right? Basically the same thing, right? Two methods, one is SHM, one is ND, they do the same thing. So my take home message is that I understand why we want to separate and distinguish. We want to be librarians and know where we can find something and categorize it. And that's good. I understand it. But do never be afraid to look over the fence if you're in one camp or the other and look for solutions that may be better or complementary. So it's not, I think it's always keep an open mind. Are they different? Yes, we can find definitions. Are they exclusive? Definitely not. So my message is don't let letters like NDT and E and SHM get in the way of your understanding. Thank you. John Popovics, everybody, huh?